Ladies and gents, welcome to your reaction, and this is what does the Queen's Guard actually do? By the channel, the Infographic Show. Yeah, the Queen Guards, those uh, people with the, you know, uh, red uh, red uniform and the, that big head, Bigsby or whatever they're called. Yeah, I think it's Bigsby. I remember Jeremy Clarkson saying that one when he was trying out Jaguar F type uh, car review. But yeah. So they are. They stand outside of the, you know, uh, castles, you know, and uh, other places like that. I always thought they are more like ceremonial things, but then I learned no, actually they do have a job. They are like, you know, how in the United States, you know, there's people that's you know guards, the president. This is just same thing for the queen, I guess, and all the royal family. But yeah, I don't know much about it, so this is gonna be fun. Remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe, check out the reaction I did, there's a link in the description, check out the cards for the playlist, check out the end cards, and yeah, let's watch this one. This video was made possible by Wix. If you're ready to create a website, head on over to wix.com slash go slash infographics 2019 to try out one of their premium plans right now. Queen Elizabeth II is the longest serving British monarch and is the current longest serving monarch in the world. Since she took the throne in 1952, much has changed in the UK. You could say the British people are not on the whole as enamored with the royal family as they were when she took the throne. But despite polls in 2018 revealing that two thirds of the British public were not interested in the royal wedding, it seems for the most part people are not interested in getting rid of their royals. We can only find one instance when someone planned to take out the Queen, and that was only revealed years later when declassified spy papers told us a New Zealand teenager had planned to do just that in 1981. Yeah, even the you know current time Meghan Markle, you know, sees you know coming out with uh, uh, Oprah and doing that interview. Yeah, it, for the uh, you know she and the prince uh, saying that we are taking a step back from the royal family or something. I'm not keeping up to date with what's happening there, but yeah, it does feel like you know is royal family falling apart. Even though you know I always thought the British are fine with the royal family, but apparently that's not true. I found out that lots of British people are like you know monarchy shouldn't exist and things like that. People are pissed about that. So I don't know. I don't know what's what's happening there, but it does feel like this royal family is kind of falling apart. Seeing all this, like popularity is going down, but who knows? So what do the Queen's Guard do with themselves all day? Welcome to this episode of the Infographic Show. What does the Queen's Guard actually do? If you saw our show titled How Much Protection Does the Royal Family Get, you'll know that the Royal Family has around the clock protection, and that comes in many forms. We're not just talking about the main royals that we all know, but the many other members of this family. The Queen might be supported by her guards, but you have other outfits such as Scotland Yard's Royalty and Specialist Protection Service, also offering armed protection when she's at home and when she goes on the road. While it seems the royals don't have many enemies, who knows if someone is willing to spend years in prison. Yeah, I think, you know, even the distance, uh, distance uh, relations, like, you know, queens, I don't know, grandfathers, sisters, Children's and their children some distance relations because there is a book that keep record on who's the next line of throne So I guess that there's a you know a whole chain of people that people at this royal guards have to protect So they, you know the if some unfortunate things happen there is always somebody to take the throne or something Prison for their five minutes of fame That's why when you see her driving down the street She'll be surrounded by an armed and very skilled special escort group so with this in mind, does she really need a Some of the videos I've seen, she just goes uh, uh, somewhere driving by herself, uh, a Land Rover. Uh, I don't think I've seen lots of envoys that has guards in it. Or maybe it's just the angle of the photo. But sometimes she just, you know, takes the Land Rover by herself and just ride around or something. Queen's Guard? First of all, you all likely know who we're talking about when we say the Queen's Guard. Since you've all seen pictures of these men that wear those large furry hats and dress in red and black. These people are not just for show, however, and they fill a role in protecting the queen. The guard is made up of infantry and cavalry soldiers, and they work in what's called the household division. That means you'll find them doing their duty at Buckingham Palace, St. James Palace, Windsor Castle, and some other places. One source tells us that the queen spends most of her time at Buckingham Palace, although she goes to Windsor Castle on most weekends, visits Balmoral Castle in Scotland for long periods of time, and for Christmas often visits St. Dringham House in Norfolk. We're told that the Queen's Guard is mainly split into two parts, 
and those two parts will be posted either at Buckingham Palace or St. James Palace. When the Queen is staying... So what about the Sandrium or whatever you said, the other places? When Queen goes there, no guard is there? ...at Buckingham Palace. There are usually three officers working there as well as 40 other ranks. There will also be four sentries at the palace. They work night and day, sometimes staying in one spot, while others will walk around the grounds. The foot guards might be part of the Grenadier Guards, the Scots Guards, the Irish Guards, the Welsh Guards, or the Coldstream Guards. If you visit Buckingham Palace at the right time, you might actually see the changing of the guard. Okay, so now we should ask if these guys ever have any trouble. In the past, the guards did have a few run-ins with a disgruntled public, but for the most part in modern times, they haven't really been tested. Perhaps the biggest case in some blush. Yeah, I mean, a few centuries ago when all the royalties around the globe, I mean, the main royalties were going down, revolutions were happening in France and other places too. I'm pretty sure during those times, these royal guards would be, you know, more scared, let's just say, because, you know, revolution can happen at any moment in England. They would be have their fear. Even the royal family would be, would be living in fear at the time like that, like anything could spark a revolution because that was going on. ...for the guards was when a man called Michael Fagan managed to get past them in 1982 <laughs> and, believe it or not, get into the Queen's bedroom. What? This was a huge thing back in the day. Some sources, maybe not that reliable, say that Fagan only did it because he had been in the pub with his friends and he had <laughs> bet them five pounds that he could get into the Queen's bedroom. He managed to scale a wall, climb up a drain pipe, and then it said by sheer luck, he ended up on the balcony outside the right bedroom. There are, after all, many bedrooms in Buckingham Palace. Stories differ as to what happened next, with some reports saying the Queen was startled and Fagan said to her, relax, sister, you don't have to worry, I'm Irish. We Damn. doubt the veracity of the source, though. Other reports say he just left the room and was subsequently apprehended by police, who probably should have been on the scene sooner. Yeah. He was not charged for trespassing, but for stealing some royal wine. In the end, he was sent to a psychiatric hospital. After hearing this... Yeah, that is what happens when no incidents happen and your royal guard becomes, let's just say, a bit lazy because nothing happens. And even the stupidest guy could get in like that. If this was United States and somebody went to the White House like that and went to the president's quarter, he wouldn't be sent to a hospital. He would get shot 50 million times. <laughs> you might be wondering when the Queen's Guard were, but the Queen's Guards were already beaten as they remained outside the palace. The fault was theirs, but also the police officer that was supposed to be guarding the room. The sentry job sounds kind of boring, as oh, they God. just stand there for long periods of time. We're told that they, they have to maintain a level of discipline. That is ridiculous. People make fun of them, tourists and things like that, and they never flinch. That is just ridiculous. And there are also rules that you can't flinch. I don't know how they do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. For hours and hours. At the order, you may not eat, sleep, smoke, stand easy, God sit, or damn. lie down during your tour of duty. In a two-hour period, every 10 minutes, they will pace back and forth where they are stationed. This can be amusing for tourists as the sentries look so serious. Tourists in the past have gotten in the way of the sentry. And if that happened, he would shout, make way for the Queen's Guard. He might also shout, stand back from the Queen's Guard. And if that isn't heeded, then he's forced to point his rifle at you. Unfortunately, some members of the public, mostly tourists, still get in these guards' way. And so their posts have largely been removed from where they could be interfered with. In an interview, one guard said that being tormented by tourists was starting to take its toll. And he was glad their posts were now in a place where the public couldn't get too close. He Good told point. Stars and Stripes in the US, it's about time. We've had enough of that lot. They'd stick pins in you, some of them. Another guard said that it was fine that people wanted photos and even got up close. But he said some tourists would throw banana skins in their path, while others would stick oranges in their bayonets or pull their bearskin busby hats. That same guard said this, which doesn't sound all that bad. Women sometimes wanted to come up and try to hold hands. Lots of women slip things into our pocket when we're wearing greatcoats. <laughs> things like addresses and telephone numbers. The Australian media said in 2018, people must be aware that while guards may seem unshakable, if someone really does something to annoy them or become too much of a nuisance, they will react. Still, one guardsman said most of the time their weapons are not loaded. You only carry live rounds if there's a high threat level that someone will attack, he said. What? But I have never carried any. According to him, they must look serious. I mean, they are actively on guard. They are on guard. So if their weapons are not loaded, what if something happens and they need their weapons? I mean, obviously that's not going to happen, but what if it does? What's the point of carrying out weapons for just for the show? 
I mean, just put the weapons I don't know, somewhere close if it's not loaded anyway. You have to load it, and that takes time anyway. Just put it somewhere else. Why keep it with you? Well, I guess bayonet. Yeah, I guess that could be an immediate weapon if needed. Theories at all times. If they're caught laughing or even chatting with the tourist, he said they're liable to be fined around $355. You're allowed to get them away by shouting warnings at them, the guard said. If they fail to move or start to act aggressively, we present our bayonets to remind them that we can do more harm than them. Another thing is, all that standing can be hard work, and some guards have been known to pass out. If they think yeah, they're seriously. Pay, it's said that they have to do that in a disciplined way. It's called a what? faint to attention. You have to faint to attention, a Major Di Bevan of the Welsh Guards told the Times newspaper. It will probably involve a broken nose and a whole lot of missing teeth. You can find photos online of what it looks like. But it seems that they also have some fun. An article Wait a second, so when they faint, they can't just, you know, react in a way. They have to faint in a certain strict position so their faces get busted when they fall down. What? First of all, when you faint, you are not in yourself. That's why you faint in the first place. How are they supposed to, you know, take care of all this? They will be at the state of panic at that time when they faint. So they're not going to remember, oh, I have to be in right position. Damn, that is some strict things right here. The article in BuzzFeed, which took the information from former guards, tells us that they would give each other funny or sometimes insulting nicknames. They would act around, too. With one guard trying to say if they got the chance to sit on the throne, they would do it and take a selfie. If you get a chance to sit on the throne of England, you aren't going to pass it up, he said. Other documents say some guards would allow their friends to park in St. James Palace, while another document said some guards would sneak the lady friends of Prince Andrew into the palace. So while they might look like inhumans to the tourist, they are certainly not unlike any of the rest of us. Obviously. In a Reddit Q&A, a guard talked about many aspects of his work, saying if you want to be one of them, you must pass a few tests and also have the smarts about you. He said that it helps to be tall. He said that while much of what they do is ceremonial, they are also security. He just added that if things do turn awry, police are usually there as a backup. Asked if he ever had spoken to the Eating queen, donut. he replied, yeah. When I was at guard on Windsor Castle, she came up to me with her husband and the dogs and asked me some questions. She's really nice. He seemed to like his job, saying only occasionally people would try and annoy him. Although he did say on any given day about 200 tourists would try and make him laugh. He also said the job gets tiresome, so you have to amuse yourself. When uh. I'm really bored, I like to mess people's pictures up. When a load of Asian tourists came and set up a huge picture, I waited until the cameraman was counting down to take the pic, and then marched up and down my post until they all left. He also said that sometimes, <laughs> perhaps the most embarrassing times, is when a guard needs to urinate but has nowhere to go. He said occasionally you'll see a puddle underneath the guard's feet. If anything were to happen to the queen, it's Yikes. good to know that she's got her loyal guard. I feel like taking a break would be more disciplined than just wetting yourself. <laughs> I love how he just, you know, ruins people's photos. I'm like, people are trying to mess with them, he mess with, he mess with the tourists. To turn Turns to around. Help. And if you've got a terrible website or just need help building a great look. Yeah, people go to wix.com for slash go for slash infographics 2019 and support that channel. Yeah, I always thought Queen's Guards are just ceremonial things just for the show. They don't actually do anything. There must be some kind of a secret service there. I don't like MI6 or something. I don't know whatever that is. Some kind of secret service there. But no, actually, you know, they do actually have to guard the Queen. I mean, if the time comes, they have to fight. And I don't know how that works because nothing happens usually. So they must be rusted. That's why, you know, that the one guy just from the bar just went into the entire Queen's room. And I'm not I'm gonna be honest, Queen is a big name figure. Presidents comes and go in the United States. Queen is there. That's a big name. So I'm pretty sure the you know uh, threats could be high too, let's just say. So just somebody can just walk into the Queen's room, that's a bit dangerous. Somebody should you know really do something about that. But yeah. Alright people, if you like my next one, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the Rick Sunday, there's a link in the description, check out the castle, the playlist, check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.